Your presence here today fills us with gratitude and joy as we embark on this exciting journey of innovation and entrepreneurship. I'm happy to share that Mr. Rakesh Verma himself, along with his family members, I jo are joining this inaugural event. With great joy and immense excursions, myself, Raji, the, Raji, the Associate Dean of Alumni Relations, extend my warmest welcome to Mr. Rakesh Kapoor and family members. Mr. and Mrs. Srinivas Bhatt, parents of uh, Mr. Kiran Bhatt, other distinguished alumni from Jaipur and Delhi chapter, Mr. Arun Ketan and his parents, Professor Shavik Bhattacharya, Professor L.K. Maheshwari, former Vice Chancellors of Bitspilani, government officials from Delhi and Jaipur, other esteemed guests from local administration and nearby institutions, faculty, staff, students joining here or virtually on this historic occasion. Today we stand at the threshold of a new era in innovation and entrepreneurship with the inauguration of this center, which is all about knowledge, gaining, sharing, applying and innovating. To invoke the blessings of Mother Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge, I invite Ms. Ananya to recite Saraswati Vandana. Hello. Jayati Jayahe Ma Saraswati Jayati Jayahe Ma Saraswati Jayati Veena Vardini Jayati Jayahe Ma Saraswati Jayati Veena Vardini Jayati Jaya He Ma Saraswati Tere Aangan Mehe Mata Aai Hum Vidya Ko Padhane Tere Aangan Mehe Mata Aai Hum Vidya Ko Padhane Hum Ko Bhi कुछ ज्ञान दो माँ हमको भी कुछ ज्ञान दो माँ तू है विद्या दायिनी जयती जय हे माँ सरस्वती जयती जय हे माँ सरस्वती कमल आसन छोड़ दे माँ देख मेरी दुर्दशा कमल आसन छोड़ दे माँ देख मेरी दुर्दशा जगत का कल्याण कर माँ जगत का कल्याण कर माँ तू है विघ्न विनाशिनी जयती जय हे माँ सरस्वती निजगग जगम मगम दधम धनी निधनी सजनी सगग सगम गसनी सगग सनी सनी धनी निधम दधम गम धनी सनी धनी दम गम दम ग सनी सदनी सनी सदनी सनी सदनी मा सरस्वती जयति जय हे जयति जय हे जयति जय हे मा Saraswati. Thank you. Thanks, Ananya. Thank you very much. Now I would like to call upon our campus director, Professor Sudhir Kumar Barai, for the welcome address. Professor Barai. Uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, it's a great honor for me to be here on the occasion of inauguration of uh, Rakesh Kapoor Innovation Center. Uh, it's a first of its own kind. Uh, everything is first here in Bitspilani. 
uh, glorious 60 years of the journey of Bits Pilani. The occasion is absolutely wonderful. Uh, so thank you so much for joining for this occasion to come down for this inauguration function. Uh, after staying for three and a half years in Bits Pilani, I realized it that the Bits always, I used to say that the USP is uh, the simplicity. Today I have learned another term. It's called relationship. The relationship which actually tells me that to build this innovation center, uh, be it the students, the staff, the faculty, the alumni, the industries, and everyone who has tremendously contributed, and in nutshell, the sweat of every individual has gone into this building up this beautiful innovation center. This is an occasion actually for us to express the gratitude, to express thank you to each one of you who were there from the moment this innovation center was conceptualized and today it becoming the realization. And this is the journey for which actually we are going into. So when I say the word of a relationship, it is a ship which is going to build, which is going to uh, uh, take a journey of uh, innovations, incubations, and startup segment from Bits Pilani. As everyone knows, Bits Pilani has been an entrepreneur's factory. I remember, and I would like to just uh, play the video in the background to just tell you that during the 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 the, the Bhumi Pujan, uh, after the this Bhumi Pujan was done, 9th of August, 2021. Today we are on the 8th of October, 2023. Almost like 25 months, and we are here with the final results. When I when I look back, this one I had said one statement there. Dup mein to sorry, safar mein dhup to hogi, lekin chalna to padega. Okay, and that is where actually we started the journey. And today I can must say that. And along with me, I'm sure Mr. Rakesh Kapoor and Mrs. Rakesh Kapoor would be definitely thinking, and I still recall my two lines of uh, Gulzar, where he says, Aajkal paon zami pe padte nahi mere, kya aapne mujhe dekha hai urte huye? And this is what actually is the, the occasion where I think the, everyone else is here is flying. Everyone is actually looking forward to fly higher and higher. And this is just the beginning. And I'm, I'm sure that all the people who are going to be part of this ecosystem are going to get benefited. I'm sure you will listen more about the innovations, incubations, and all the startup uh, and activities which is going to happen in this center from our other leaders. So thank you so much. And it is a wonderful occasion. And I'm looking forward to be the, 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 the part of this exciting journey. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Barai. It's time for all of us to know a little background behind the need for creating such a center of innovation at Pilani campus. I invite Professor Arya Kumar, Dean Alumina Relations, to share the story briefly. Professor Arya could not join here due to health issues and will be connecting uh, through virtually. Professor Arya, please. Thank you, thank you, Professor Raji. Uh, am I audible to all of you? Yes, sir. Uh, good day, good day, God's day. It's a very auspicious day in the 8th October, which has got a number of other significances as far as Rakesh Kapoor is concerned. His birthday, when I look at the 4 8, 1958, is a number 8. 17 Douglas, he launched India Fund, which is also number 8. And August, we had a Bhumi Puja of this particular center, which is also an 8th month in the eternity of a year. As far as BITS is concerned, the entrepreneurship is a hallmark because of the education process. And when any BITSians we talk to him, he always says the education process, which has been creating great leaders, be it entrepreneurs, academicians, corporate leaders, be it art, culture, any walk of life, you will find BITSians excelling. Formal journey for entrepreneurship at BITS Pilani started somewhere in 2003 when we were identified as one among the five institutions by the Vadavane Foundation to be the founding members of the National Entrepreneurship Network. And thereon, we had set up a center for entrepreneurship leadership and we were too early in terms of first batch of incubators being funded by the DST along with the three, four IITs in the year 2004. But it was soon that we realized that incubator has come before uh, creating an ecosystem. So at this stage, we join hands with the alumni 
and had started creating a deeper foundation for an entrepreneurship foundation at the Bits Bilani by her courses, by her workshops, so and so forth. It was Professor Maheshwari who for the first time had set up Entrepreneurship Development IPR unit in 2006, if I remember it correctly, when he took over as a Vice Chancellor. And I happened to have taken over again the lead in terms of the germinating the suit for IPR. So journey which started from Professor Venkateshwaran through Professor V.S. Rao in terms of incubator getting funded over here took a still deeper route by the initiative of Professor Baishwari that further got strengthened by Professor B. N. Jain in terms of identifying alumni as a one pillar and innovation and incubation as another pillar as far as the strategic planning was concerned. But it was in the year 2017-18 for the first time when Professor Savit Bhattacharya took over, he founded the Alumni Relations Division and were, was very passionate about as far as entrepreneurship in the Bits Pilani is concerned because that happened to be the greatest, greatest strength for the Bits Pilani. And in 2018-19, it was Mr. Sachin Aveha, Mr. Arun Ketan and myself, we were looking at the synergy between Alumni Relations and the entrepreneurship ecosystem at the Bits Pilani. And we conceived at that point of time in the year 1819 to have a facility of a world-class nature with the state of art having the deep technology as a backbone for coming out of the ventures. And the conceptualization which took place at that point of time had uh, the blessings of our Chancellor, Sri Kumar Mangam Verla, blessings and the support from the advisors to uh, Mr. Kumar Mangam Birla, by way of Mr. Devo Bhattacharya as well as Mr. Dilip Gaur and then we never looked back and for me it was some sort of a dream from the 2005 onward because whenever I used to attend the meetings of incubators at a national level it used to happen in a, one of the IITs, one of the IAMs and they had always an independent center, independent facility, independent building. For me this kind of a building with the labs was always a dream coming true for which I really am highly fascinated as far well as this temple of learning having Rakesh Kapoor Innovation Center is concerned. It has been again supported by a large number of alumni indirectly as well as indirectly uh, be it the funding, be it uh, contributing to the courses, be it contributing to the ecosystem, be it contributing to the workshop being organized etc. But then I always had a thought in my mind that I have to approach Rakesh Kapoor as far as this particular initiative at Bitpilani is concerned. And exactly on the 5th of January 2022, I wrote to my first mail and instant response came from his mailbox saying that I would like to learn and know more about the bits. Bits has a special place in my heart. Bits, when I look back, has given me a lot. I would certainly love to contribute back whatever best I can do. And I was seeing my mailbox today. We had exchanged more than 100 mails for this particular center. In the second or the third meeting with him, along with Professor Savik Bhattacharya, he was very clear that he would like to do something for the entrepreneurship and innovation system at the Bits Pilani. Between, again, entrepreneurship and innovation, his thought was very clear. There is an innovation which leads to entrepreneurship. So the seeds and the foundation have to build our own innovation, which has to be geared up with the product, processes, business models, paradigms, uh, positioning, and the philosophy of entrepreneurship has to basically revolve around innovation. And when I was discussing with him on a naming right, he said it has to be innovation has to be the crux behind the naming right as far as the center is concerned. And thereafter, he generously contributed and then said that as a branding for the center is concerned, I leave it fully to you and your team. And uh, thereafter, I think I have never looked back and uh, whenever I have been discussing with him, I have been always requesting him kindly spare some more time with us in terms of giving a momentum and acceleration to this activity, which is a hallmark for the Bits Pilani. He has been kind enough to say that Whenever he happens to be in India, he would love to spend time and I have been again after him with a selfish motive of looking at the 100 million uh, India fund which is launched for a health, uh, hygiene 
and the home products related funding uh, he, he has been kind enough to say he would also look into the possibility in terms of funding through his fund as well as the ventures coming out from Bitspilla is concerned so i am very very happy and thrilled today to see something which got germinated with a small thought in the year 1819 has taken a shape today which is bound to give rise to i would say continuous flow of ventures after ventures we have today 14 unicorns with more than 32 more than 52 billion dollars of valuation i'm sure many more unicorns decacorns and sunicorns would come out of this particular center the greatest strength of the center is the contribution by the large number of alumni in terms of funding multiple state smart labs be it an ai iot air vr fintech and a great support which you have received by our csr funding from aditya birla companies the first funding which came for the center was again by century textile which gave us a lot of confidence that we need to need not look back and let me just at the end share that this was the one project which is to the heart of all alibanais across the globe which got a closer in terms of funding within 3 to 5 months which is a very very difficult proposition to visualize for such a mega project to be conceived and it was a grace of a god and support of a many alibanais and the corporates which has fructified well today in terms of seeing this facility and i'm sure students faculty and alumni would take a benefit of it today we are fortunate to have a leadership of professor ram gopal rao who in the last 3 4 months it tells has unfolded three mega schemes one is a project on a sparkle in sal by the students we taken up as innovative projects another the faculty undertaking a entrepreneurship initiatives third is a phd leading to the entrepreneurship i am sure the kind of a support which we have been receiving from the leadership would go a long way in terms of really making a mark for a bit as a world renowned institution in the area of entrepreneurship and innovation thank you so much rakesh and the one and all alumni who have contributed to this facility and thanks a lot to the whole of the leadership and a special uh, regards and a thanks to our beloved chancellor uh, who support for this particular initiative has been a amazing support in terms of fructifying it well thank you so much to one and all who has gracing this occasion physically and virtually across the globe thanks a lot thank you professor arya thank you so much i think since uh, we all hear that the journey started when professor maheshwari was the vice chancellor over here so i think we cannot miss this chance of hearing from him uh, we have the interest in the interest of time i request all the speakers to you know uh, consistent to be with the time so professor maheshwari please just a few words please गुरुर्ब्रह्म गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुदेव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर डॉक्टर राम गोपाल राव प्रोफेसर सौभिक भट्टाचार्य एक्स वाइस चांसलर डायरेक्टर डॉक्टर सुधीर हराल मिस्टर एंड मिसेज राकेश कपूर एंड ऑल फैमिली मेंबर्स ऑफ राकेश कपूर distinguished alumni who have come over here mr arun khetan my pranams to your respected parents here who are sitting here next to you babu ji bahut bahut pranam aapko mata ji aapko bhi bahut bahut pranam and all people who are assembled here directors of siri directors of bet city people distinguished uh, 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 gathering here which is there and other rooms also there my pranams to all of them it's a great journey great day when the alumni's contribution has come to this shape in alumni have affinity to bits particularly right from beginning and it is their love affection and sense of belonging to this institution that they contribute rakesh i am really thrilled and mrs rakesh you must have been motivator for this particularly i think god bless you and more and more will come please take it from my side the giving is always take getting unless you give you can't get also that is the that is the rule of the nature so i think you are once you are giving you are going to get more in this project number of people have contributed greatly and i can tell you in my particular analysis establishment of bits pilani itself has been a journey of innovation 
if you are talking about technology innovation, but this uh, setting up in a remote zone of Rajasthan, no uh, connection by road, rail, or any method here, a institute of this nature, and it has, I think for this, my gratitude go to the Birla family, particularly late Sri G.D. Birla, Dr. K.K. Birla, and all B.K. Birla ji, Sarla Birla ji, and all the members of Birla family, and also the Chancellor, Sri Kumar Mangla Birla ji, who has brought to this shape particularly. You find, if you start 1935-1936, on the initiation of Sri G. D. Birla, uh, when he persuaded uh, Pandit Madhavan Maliya to bring Sukhdev Ji Pandey to Pilani, a town of in nature, a, rather not a town, even a village it was, to bring in this nature the field of education, I think Sukhdev Ji Pandey Ji came in those years and he stayed back in Pilani taking the lal turns and all that, spreading the education in this area, particularly of Raj remote area of Rajasthan. I think my pranams to such a noble, noble souls who have contributed. People who have contributed significantly have been Professor Lakshmi Narayanan, a strict disciplinarian who was the uh, principal of the engineering college, the science college had their principles, arts college had their own principles. But Lakshmi Narayan ji was known to be a strict disciplinarian. So discipline we learned from him. And then came Dr. C. R. Mitra, and you find many seats which are today as a result of that innovative ed education model. Then Professor Bankration, I took over and then Professor Jain took over, then Professor Bhattacharya, today is Professor Ram Gopal Rao who has taken over. So this journey is continuing. Let me just touch upon, because time given is only two minutes, so I think I will request for two more minutes, if you kindly. Really. Just let me speak for some uh, time frames here. 1965, 64, 65, if you see, G.D. Birla was a person of his own nature, often know, and a tremendous philanthropist. He went to MIT when uh, Kumar's father, Aziz Birla ji, was studying in MIT. And he brought, as a result of that visit, collaboration with MIT. And what was that collaboration? It was the Ford Foundation grant, which could bring American professors to Bits Pilani, and they will set up as a university the model of a different nature here. So it was that visit particularly which allowed people who come from MIT and spend some time in Pilani particularly. My American professor, Professor D.C. Wyatt, D.H. Barker, so many people came here and lectured to the students here. And what did we learn in that particular four or five years? We learned essentially what was called a semester system, breaking away from annual system, from mark system to letter grading system, relative letter, letter, letter grading system, and continuous evaluation, internal evaluation. These were unknown and people talk in those era, array standards will come down. If you talk about internal evolution, how can they sustain in this country of cheats and all that? This is the kind of situation here. So 65 to 70, we learned that kind of feature here. Then came a new phase in the life of BITS particularly, where Professor Mitra had come there. And in, in his particular journey, you know, uh, I will give you some figures, which will be startling figure in many buddies' mind. Arun is very much here. I will give some figures particularly. In a meager budget, how to run a university, and you are talking about so many things here. So he brought restructuring of programs. So humanities, science, engineering. Engineering was always getting people, but science was getting very low profile people. Sec highly, uh, second division people you can't get in science. As arts, forget about. Third divisions will come here in this plani. Now as a university, if you are setting up, then you can't have different standards of people here. So it was essentially the integration of different disciplines, which brought the different disciplines uh, in that era, particularly 70 to 75 period, particularly. Programs were merged together. Departments were merged together. Geology, botany, got biological sciences, triply, essentially name electrical engineering, electronics engineering came electrically particularly. So many things changed essentially here. And programs were structured in such a manner. Group A, Group B, Group C program they were called as. Group A was engineering program, Group B was science program, and Group C was some kind of humanities program here. And what was done, 1130, IBM 1130 was established here. Innovation we are talking about, 1130 you must have used. Punch card karte se jab computer pe jane ke liye, or card dete se deck ko vahan par ja kar ke, print out nikal tha. And that particular situation of 1130 particularly uh, made compulsory courses like computer programming, two courses common to everybody, workshop practice, technical arts, uh, uh, communication. So many courses were common to all these students, whether they are engineering, they are sciences or humanities. Many alumni are sitting here. They will witness to that kind of scenario. That was the kind of situation. 
the needs also rose about how to bring same quality students. So dual degree concept was brought in as a need to bring the equality of uh, situation, dual degree program. Then came the, inter the interface with the industry, which was uh, liking of G.D. Birla. He told Dr. Mitra that I want industry collaboration to be there. How to implement? Everybody talks about on platform. But here was a person who brought this collaboration into practice particularly. Practice school came into picture. And you find here admissions particularly was always a situation. And admission was marked by totally on merit. No quota for anybody. I, this is a hallmark of bits, which I think is untrained even today. I think we are proud of that. I want to clap for that particularly. The, the admission process of bits particularly, such a transparent process. Any campus of bits particularly you see here, that was the situation here. And uh, the, as, as a result of this, MSc Tech Computer Science, MSc Tech Instrumentation, MSc Tech Science and Technology Development, Museum Study, these programs were started way back in, in those era particularly, and new things here. 75, 76 came the need of different nature, of a different administrative structure. So functional administrative structure was given in which you had divisions, units, and groups particularly. And divisions were research and development, the ARC, academic registration, counseling, practice school division, so and so forth. So many divisions were there. It was the need of the hour to restructure the admission because you run practice school, you can't go to three departments separately, chemical department separately. So that is how the uh, situation was there. And academic regulations were written in such a manner that was a document in which of course, I have observed all these things as a student, as a colleague also, and later on worked also on that. Up to 2 o'clock in the night, he was dictating, Dr. Mitra was dictating, I think, director's office at that time must have had his dictation. They have to be researched upon. I think such dictations up to 2 o'clock in the night, he will give three typists, three standards sitting together, give the dictation there, and then Professor Ayer, Professor Krishnamurti, Professor Ramna, and Professor Nagrath, they will take home and examine that, and then bring in the morning, 9 o'clock again meeting is there. We have all participated in that. So academic regulations were brought in here. So this was essentially 75, 70, up to 80, it went on here. 80 saw the emergence of collaborative programs. MEs particularly, <coughs> the conventional MEs were drawing very few students, not many. Hardly you will find 10 seats are there, 5 will be there, 3 will be there, 2 will be there, which is highly uneconomical in terms of running. But new concept came of ME collaborative program in projects engineering with DCPL Calcutta, industrial production with Gwalior and Nagda, and industrial development with banking institute in Bombay. These were the programs which are brought in here. And this was also the beginning of distance learning programs division in which we could offer programs for the uh, industries and all that here. And MEs again were restarted again in a different form. ME in electronics and control, ME in systems and information, ME in science and technology development, ME in e-business, and many other MEs were started like that here. Same things were offered on distance learning by MS in software system, MS in SNT, and MS in electronics and control to different organizations. And I think I can tell you here this period saw also off-campus PhD emergence in which you see B. Anand Bose, you know he's the governor today. I was dean of a research at that time. He did as a student, of course, not sitting, coming here, but staying in uh, Kerala and doing his PhD on off-campus PhD on the area development in which he was housing, low-cost housing, etc., an MPhil waste structure. And in that particular era, I can tell you the ME of Siri, particularly collaboration with Siri, started Dr. Chandrakar here. He was part of that ME in microelectronics, which was first of its kind in the country. This was started. Now, coming to 90s, particularly up to 2000, this was uh, strengthening of TLPD program, work integrated learning program, division was coined at that time. International collaborations increased. Myself, Professor Bankation, visited USA for uh, almost three weeks, different visiting, different institutions, etc. As a result of that, number of collaborations came into picture in biomedical sciences, in uh, other areas, hospital and health system management, the Tulane University Medical Center, then Uniform Services University of Health Sciences, and alumni engagement has been tremendous. Alumni gave us support very tremendously, particularly there. 2000, the beginning of new campuses. Dubai campus came in 2000. A negotiation came. I remember myself, Dr. Bankrishan, went to Dubai to have negotiation with the ETA ESCON group to establish a center in Dubai. And I think we had intense two to three times discussions. And we said, where are we going to But I think I, I praise Dr. Bankrishan for such a, uh, I can tell you, uh, uh, he was so honest and in terms of sincerity and patience. Greatest achievement of Dr. Bankrishan was patience. And of patience. And finally, this was launched on and convincing KK Birla ji, it was not an easy joke, particularly. So he went there. Then, uh, you know the story, 2004 came the Goa campus. 
with the land from Juari uh, taken in uh, 2004, and uh, Bits Goa campus came into picture, and 2005-06 period I took over here. So first task was launching of within 2020. And I see, sir, you are within 2030. The great things, again give a clap for him. I think the greatest thing he has given, I, I heard him in the board meeting particularly, and I think very visionary plan, I can tell you. I have no words to praise that, but I think great future this institute has got. And the launch of this vision was there, and uh, Chris Ramchandran and his team came from Adit Birla Group, and then I think this marched on 2008 onwards in a vigorous way when uh, Kumar Mangalam took over essentially. 2008 was the beginning of Hyderabad campus, and KK Birla's time it was there. By Raj Lekasrati photo you must have seen there, that is how it was there here. And expansion in all campuses took place as a result of within 2020. A simple situation which was there, now it has gone into a acceleration situation and within. 2010 onwards, BITS School of Management has come onwards now. BITS School of Law has come and I visualize a future where it will be a BITS School of Health Sciences and Medicine which will be brought in here, particularly in Plani, so that Plani will get a lot of people here. And I can tell you here, this journey will continue. I can only cite G.D. Virla's statement which he told read somewhere, not that I have listened to him, he only tell, told in the uh, gathering, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, he told, not that I am quoting, but I remember the theme which was there, institutions are not made by, by money alone, institutions are made by the God's grace, institutions are made by the hard work of people who are there, and it is the hard work of the people who are there in this center particularly, they will lead it and I can tell you, if it is taken in the mission mode, there are horizons to reach and we are, sky is the limit. We will have a new nature and Professor uh, Rama Rao, Ram Gopal Raoji was worried about the perception of bits. Perception increase will happen as a result of this center here. If we take it in a spirit of innovation, a spirit of uh, entrepreneurship, a spirit of giving back to society, I think this, uh, I can just tell you here, what was the limitation at that time? If you go into the details, essentially, uh, it's a very interesting feature. In 90s, uh, or rather 70s, I can tell you, when Dr. Mitra joined, the budget of this institute was only in few tens of lakhs, maybe 80 lakh, 90 lakh. Nobody was able to join. Nobody said, what will you do in this money? Nobody joined. Nobody was wanting to join. 90 lakh mein pura institute chalta tha par ye. Of course, its structure was given by Pradlas. That was a different thing here. By 1980s, it went to 121 lakhs, 1 crore 21 lakhs. By 1990s, it went to 250 lakhs. Sir, these figures are from the budget papers. And 2000, it became 25 crores. 2005, 49 crores. That is where I took over here. 2010, it is 190 crores. And Arunji will tell, today it is 1,400 crores. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Maheshwari. I think thank you for giving a background of how the Bits Pilani has been evolved, you know, over the years, starting from 1970s and all. Thank you, sir. Now I invite uh, Professor Bhattacharya, uh, Chavik Bhattacharya, a former Vice Chancellor, to please say a few words. He has been instrumental in, you know, in this facility. Professor Bhattacharya, please. Thank you, Rajiv. Um, good morning. It feels good. It feels good to be back, particularly when you see your dream in reality and you know, in physical shape, and it's, it's amazing. It's fabulous. Couple of things, Rakesh, you have given us wings. We are talking about flying, you have. You and your family, you have given us wings and you also has, you have given us a, a nice phrase. We heard you in, in, in Jaipur BGM, pay forward. It has gone deep into my heart. That, that's, that's a wonderful thing to do. I believe, uh, you know, last few years, uh, uh, Rajiv, just, just a little word of consolation. I will not take a long time. So, I know you guys are already in trouble. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, we, we had uh, challenges on, on multiple fronts. Uh, we decided to take up a, a very, very extremely difficult task of transforming up fabulous, a top of the line, given the, the ecosystem, given the challenges, given the support system and all that. It's, it's nearly impossible. With, with. 
But I think uh, our faculty colleagues, particularly the, the leadership of the institute, responded brilliantly. And, uh, and today, I think Bitspilani is flaunting different numbers. Um, the transformation had to be supported on a couple of other fronts. I, I was I mean, absolutely delighted that I could give special time to a couple of people. You know, it, it started, I think Arya didn't leave much for me to say. He has pretty much covered everything. But, but the real truth is, I mean, Sachin joined a little later, Mr. Sachin Arya standing over there, and uh, Professor Arya Kumar. I could give additional time. I was biased positively. And I could give special attention, special time, my own thinking, whatever I could do. And alumni relations started flying. These are the wings. And uh, you know, there was a lull after uh, Prashant Palakutti and uh, you know, his, his donation, mega donation. And we were actually not feeling very comfortable about this center. We had raised some money, but it was quite a distance from what we needed. And that distance was not insignificant. And, and Rakesh, you came along, both of you. That, that's a wonderful thing because that has led to two other mega steps. And this is what, this creates an ecosystem, this creates a, a momentum, an inspiration, an encouragement. Others wake up. It's a huge, huge trigger. It's a tremendous cascading effect that happens. It's not just this building. This particular act of the family, Rakesh Kapoor and family, is going to have a huge, huge impact that only future will be able to tell. This is what I see. You know, the, the institute has a huge responsibility. It's all done. It's all good. The building and the facility is all done. What happens inside the building is no less a challenge. Brilliant outcomes, they have to come out of this. Otherwise, all these efforts are not going to be useful to us. We can build beautiful facilities, which Filani has beautiful facilities across all its campuses, five campuses. But the outcome is what matters. The human resource ultimately is what's going to speak for on our behalf. Human resource, one sitting right here. So, so this, is, this makes a difference. Alumni relations cell completely got transformed from zero. I, I have no hesitation in saying there was nothing. In 2017, June, it got created. Kailash is sitting there. These guys were doing things for the institute. Institute wasn't doing anything for them. I'm, I'm very, very comfortable saying this. But now, I think we have learned to connect better. We have learned to speak to them with warmth. We, we know how to communicate. I think the institute would do very well to leverage on this biggest strength. Bitspilani has two unique strengths compared to the bigger institutes, the so-called IITs and others. They're blessed with all kinds of support from this government, right? Bitspilani's unique strength is stellar alumni, like Rakesh Kapoor. And there's a unique DNA in, in its alumni, in, its, in, in, in the students of incubation, innovation, entrepreneurship. We must leverage on this. We, we should move away from the conventional path, which we have, time and again we have done. And, and, and this is going to augur well. This is going to lead us to very, 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 very different outcomes, very, very different pathways to success. It's Pilani. It's magic. It's Pilani. It's like no other. Deep gratitude, Rakesh. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bhattacharya. It's time now to invite Mr. Arun Ketan, CFO Bits Pilani, to provide an insight on how we went about planning and how the center will see the reality of the day. Not many people know that he was deeply involved since the inception of the project, from architectural design to construction to interiors and deep bottling neck to every stage of the project. Mr. Ketan, please. Thank you, Rajiv. And I think he has said more than what I have contributed. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so uh, today is a big day for Bits Pilani, uh, Mr. Kapoor, Mrs. Kapoor, and the uh, larger alumni community. So we had, uh, so Bits has always been known for its entrepreneurship culture and has produced great entrepreneurs. But uh, we didn't have any, you know, dedicated facility or, or something to boost this culture, which, which was always there, really. 
So in 2019, as Professor Arya also mentioned, so three of us, myself, Sachin, and Professor Arya, we sat together and we said, can we do something big? You know, and we didn't know what and how really, you know. Uh, so that's where this idea came up. Can we build a center? Then what center? What will it do? So I think, you know, from there we started. And uh, today we are, we, we all know what, where we have reached. It took a bit longer, if I look at from my own, uh, you know, uh, calculations that in 2019, we started thinking about it. 2023, we are seeing this uh, in reality. But yes, this is just the beginning of, of a new, you know, horizon where BITS is going to be in entrepreneurship. That's what I can share. So uh, I would like to express my gratitude, uh, Mr. Kapoor, Mrs. Kapoor, without Madam, of course, you know, it's, it's always a family which contributes, you know, really, not, not individual, right? And the larger alumni community, and, and also uh, Aditya Bila Group Companies, uh, Century Textiles and Aditya Bila Capital Foundation, who has, you know, contributed for CSR, which has, you know, made this dream turn into a reality. Uh, our Chancellor, Mr. Kumar Mangalam Birla, has a vision that BITS should be Stanford of the West. So that's the entrepreneurship vision he carries. We already have great culture, but how we can be the best known school for entrepreneurship, that's always in his mind. I would also like to convey a sincere gratitude on behalf of Mr. Dilip Gaur, who could not be present here for some reasons. Uh, he is a member of Board of Governors and also advises Mr. Birla on bits related matters. So he has expressed his sincere thanks to the Kapoor family and the larger alumni community and given his best wishes to bits team to take this center to the next heights. Thank you so much. I'm missing Professor Arya if he's listening to me, really, you know, because three of us started and I would have loved that three of us would have been here. Thank you. All the best. Thank you, Mr. Gaitan. Now I request Professor V. Ram Gopal Rao, the Vice Chancellor of Bits Pilani, to share his thoughts on what the vision holds for Bits Pilani in the area of innovation. Professor Rao, please. Morning, Mr. Rakesh Kapoor and family. So thank you for what you have done. My former VCs, Professor Shavik Bhattacharya, Professor Maheshwari, for being here, post director Professor Barai, and we also have CD Pilani director Dr. Pancharya. Thank you, Dr. Pancharya, for taking time to attend this meeting. Arun Ketan, and uh, of course, everyone present here. And uh, I think uh, you know we have heard about the past. Uh, we have seen how institutions are built. The institution building is like a relay race, right? So the you one generation of leaders, one generation of faculty pass on the baton. To the next generation of leaders, and uh, you know, institutions can see far, can go long distances only by you know going together, by standing on the shoulders of all the previous people who have built these institutions. And uh, I think a uh, lot of uh, people have contributed to uh, bringing up this Rakesh Kapoor Innovation Center. Maybe my contribution is the least among all of that. I have just joined about uh, six months ago. And uh, of course, you know, you have heard from many of them who have done that, but Siddharth Banerjee is also here, who is uh, you know, the pillar uh, for uh, getting this all uh, done, and uh, of course, Arun Ketan and everybody, everybody here. And uh, there are also many people, you know, who have contributed to this building. The exterior and other things came from Rakesh Kapoor. I would also mention that uh, uh, our gratitude to all these generous donors we have Anuradha and Prashant Palakurti. We have Abhinav Vastana and Abhijit Kane. We have Chaitanya Kalipat Napu. We have Rakesh Verma. We have Anurag Jain, Ras Perad Jr., Vinod Saraf, Raghu and Aparna Seturaman, Mukesh Sharma, Kiran Bhatt, Prem Talreja, Hari Minan, Batch of 1993, Batch of 1989, Batch of 1994, and of course the CSR of uh, Aditya Birla Foundation, Vadwani Foundation, Shobitam, and there are many others. So I think so many people have been uh, there. You will see uh, all their names as you walk around the around the center. And um, of course, these couplets and shahiris 
and uh, all these Bollywood or Professor Barai's domain, they are not my domain. <laughs> but uh, but I, you know, I one thing which uh, I thought Rakesh Kapoor can definitely say is, my akela hi chalta jane be jane be manjil magar. My akela hi chalta tha jane be manjil magar. Log saath saath gara saath saath gaye. जुड़ते रहे और कारवां बनते गया। So I think that is how it has happened now. <laughs> so the so education, you know, for any educational institution, there are three aspects. One is education, one is research, the third is innovation. All these need to go in, uh, uh, you know, jointly with each other, and there has to be a synergy between all of these activities. And uh, in fact, as uh, you know, Mr. Birla. I also talked about this. We need to, in fact, my previous vice chancellor talked about the past, and my role is to talk about the future. So I think uh, BITS needs to become the Stanford of India, or even Stanford of the East, for that matter. I think we need to build and make uh, BITS uh, the Stanford of uh, India to start with. And uh, if you look at the Stanford acceptance rate, it's about 3.94%. That's what the Stanford acceptance rate is. BITS acceptance rate is between 2 to 3%. So it's, it's as tough to get into bits as it is to Stanford. So that's one thing. And uh, Stanford has over 100 unicorns. So over 100 unicorns. Bits has 15 unicorns. So we have a lot of uh, catch up to do there. And uh, Stanford's total number of students is approximately similar to the bits total number of students, about 17,000 to 18,000. And uh, but Stanford has 2,300 faculty to teach these 18,000 uh, students, whereas BITS has only about 900 faculty. So we have you know, some way to go even when it comes to that. One thing that has made Stanford what Stanford is, is that synergy between research and innovation. Whatever research that happens in Stanford leads to technologies, and those technologies create new companies. I think that research and innovation culture going hand in hand is what is uh, what is what has made Stanford what it is. That is something that currently is missing in bid system. Of course, all this innovation, alumni, entrepreneurship, all of that has happened out of alumni who have passed out of the institute. But we want to see more and more research carried out in the bid system, leading to you know these unicorns. I think that is something that we would like to do. We have taken a large number of steps now. And uh, we are actually, one thing which we have done in the last few months is uh, we have consolidated all our innovation activities across all campuses. They were quite fragmented. Every campus was working on its own. So we have now a consolidated and a unified uh, kind of an innovation ecosystem. And we have, in fact, Sachin Arya as the CEO of that uh, entire uh, system. And a lot of good things are beginning to happen now. And we have also funded in just the last uh, you know, three months we have we are funding something like 100 research projects from students so the 100 projects from students many of these projects are as group projects we want to see students working as groups you know nothing is ever built alone nothing happens by one individual doing everything there can be leaders leaders can be leading from the front or leading from behind but it's always a group effort so we are now you know learning to making our students learn how to work in groups how to create uh, things where uh, none existed before. So almost 100 projects we are funding now under two schemes that we initiated, Sparkle and Solve. We also have a faculty startup policy now for entrepreneurship. That's again something where we want to see a few hundred startups coming out of our, uh, our faculty. And our target for this year is 100 patents. So we want to see that every year BITS files a minimum of 100 patents. Because out of these patents will come innovation, out of these patents will come deep tech startups. So therefore, we need to strengthen that. That's a need that we realize. And this year, with the way we are progressing, I think we should be able to touch that 100 patent mark. We also started the country's very unique PhD program. We call it DRIVE. DRIVE stands for Deep Tech Research, Innovation, and Value Generation Entrepreneurship. So here we are admitting PhD students with a view to make them entrepreneurs. Usually the PhD programs in the country are all ge geared to producing university professors. Nothing uh, other than that is expected out of these PhD students. But we are changing the paradigm of what PhD programs need to be in the country. BITS have always been known for innovation in the educational programs. That is where we have taken a lead now. And the PhD program this year, we hope to admit at least uh, 30 to 40 PhD students under the PhD drive program. And we hope to see over the next five years, five 
five to ten years, hundred unicorns, sorry, not hundred startups coming out of the PhD students. Hundred startups coming out of PhD students. Otherwise, it's the BTECs who are currently dominating that entire landscape. So we want to see our PhDs and faculty dominate the research landscape and also take that research to innovation and start more and more enterprises out of bits. That's one thing that we have done. Thanks to Mr. Billa and thanks to everyone. We now have a seed fund for funding interdisciplinary projects among faculty, 15 crores per year. I can tell you, I was, I'm from the IIT system, worked there for 25 years. No IIT has that kind of money for internal seed grants to collaborate for collaborations between faculty. We want to break these traditional boundaries because you know for a problem, solution to a problem often comes out of interdisciplinary research. Problems don't have a discipline. So therefore, by fragmenting our research, we will never be able to provide solutions to problems. Most of the research that happens in India today is solutions looking for a problem. That approach never works, you know, to actually provide solutions. Our goal will be solution to a problem. So that is what we will be undertaking in bits now. And uh, we would like to see all the alumni, you know, listening to us and part to party to everything that's happening that, you know, be participating in our endowment uh, initiative. We will have a $100 million endowment initiative. We will have a grand launch for it, you know, somewhere in the Rashtrapati Bhavan or, you know, somewhere in the country. And that $100 million endowment is what needs to push bits, you know, towards that, uh, that Stanford of India kind of a thing. And so that will be the beginning for all the transformation that will happen. So there is a lot uh, that uh, BITS uh, needs to achieve. Of course, it's standing on the shoulders of all these giants now. And I have no hesitation in saying that BITS will reach its, uh, its, uh, its uh, glory kind of thing. And there is a lot that can come out of the BITS system. And uh, we are, you know, indeed one of the finest institutions. Recently, when somebody, you know, I keep receiving a lot of calls from all over from all these high offices in government offices saying that inka admission karwaye, unka admission karwaye, you know, my A reference I am, over reference I am. My answer to them is only simple. You know, I can, you can come and verify the BITS admission records of the last 60 years. Show me one admission which has been done outside of merit, right? I mean, the reason why I have joined BITS is because of the trust that BITS system has. And it's like any government institute, it's like any IAT. I think uh, that is the trust that BITS holds now. With the help of alumni, with the help of, you know, philanthropists, with the help of all of our well-wishers, I think, uh, you know, we can take BITS to that next level. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Rao. Now it's time to introduce the speaker of the day. The presence of Mr. Kapoor here is a testament of his unwavering support, his love to its alma mater, and his dedication to fostering innovation. For the information of the audience, Mr. Kapoor was the global CEO of Reckitt Bankers uh, for, for, around less, for around a decade, uh, where he also spent 32 of years of his life of his professional career and was subsequently recognized as one of the foremost global CEOs in the consumer good uh, industry. During his tenure, he transformed the company from a household cleaning company to one of the largest health and hygiene companies. He is now the founder of 12 Flags Company, which is backed by blue chip institutions to invest behind the most promising uh, consumer businesses. His commitment and generosity has made this moment possible. Mr. Kapoor believes that we can seldom even pay back we can't pay back to our teachers and professors or our educational institution, but we can pay forward. With this brief introduction, I will now invite the star of the event, Mr. Rakesh Kapoor, to deliver the inaugural talk. Thank you very much. So uh, first of all, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor Rao, uh, former Vice Chancellors, Professor Maheshwari, Professor Bhomik, Director Bits Pilani, uh, Professor Bharai, uh, respected, uh, you know, family members of uh, Mr. Ketan, uh, Director Siri, many distinguished guests uh, and alumni who are present here and probably listening to me uh, uh, in other rooms or in other places. Um, I, I just wanted to uh, say that you know, BIT stands for a lot of wonderful, wonderful things. Of course, the center of excellence and, um, and, and eminence. But I think there is something about BITS which I think uh, we, we, we sometimes don't recognize. BITS sometimes uh, manages to deliver far more than we come in for. 
And I have to say that, you know, when I came to the center and uh, in the morning also, but also last night, I took a sneak preview. I was absolutely stunned by the quality of work and by the way the center has come. It is far beyond my imagination. And I just want to thank all the people who have made this center really happen. I think my part and my family's part was a very easy part. The most difficult part was the blood, sweat, and tears that might have gone into building of the center. And it is absolutely a wonderful world-class facility. And nothing will give me more pleasure than we using the center to really create a culture, I would say, of innovation and entrepreneurship, which actually results not just in innovation by itself, but results in things that we can do to benefit society, to benefit people around the world. So I'm absolutely honored that BITS chose me and put my name on this wonderful initiative. And it is probably the greatest honor of my life, and I'm forever going to be grateful for this. So I, I just want to know that it seems a bit surreal. I came to this campus for the very first time about 50 years ago as a really 16-year-old, very confused, fairly uneducated person. And if I'm here today, it could only have happened because of what happened here, the magic that happened here to me. And I would like to thank the professors of BITS, the people of BITS who made me who I became. Because I do remember 50 years ago, I was nothing like what I am today. So this could not have happened because of, without this. I came from a very, very small town uh, called Bareilly. Bareilly, as uh, Professor Bharai knows, has been made popular. I don't know whether you are one of the authors of the songs where uh, jhumkas, many jhumkas have seemed to have fallen, basically, and still not found somehow. So I mean, I think they keep getting fallen and not get found. It's been made very, very famous. I, I was grew up in that town. The year I was born, the literacy rate in Bareilly, according to some Wikipedia, was one in 16. So I, I had a, no, sorry, one in, uh, so I had a 16% chance, one in about seven or eight. So I had a 16% chance of being educated. And I have to say that that chance became fantastic because my mother was the principal of the local school. So obviously I managed to, uh, you know, go into school. And because she was the principal of the school, I also managed to come first in class every time. <laughs> so because of this problem, she said, like, I was never being challenged. I used to play marbles. And she said one fine day, you are not going to study very hard because obviously you are coming first in class. Mathematically, I could come in first in class, you know, as you know, the education system and the standard were not very high. So again, when I think about that journey, by the way, my mother was the performance manager of the family. She was the one who was the demanding person. It was my father who was the nurturer, quite the reverse actually. And I'm massively grateful for my father because of what the nurturing I got. And the, I'm going to tell you a story linked to that too. So I came here, you know, really very uneducated, really very, uh, you know, from this very small town. And many, many people think that I became a great engineer from here, quite the reverse. I did not become a great engineer from here. But what I did get from here is something that I don't believe any other place in the world you can get so easily. I became how to manage both freedom on the one side with responsibility. I learned to take decisions for the very first time by myself and grow up into figure out what was right and what was wrong. To get that sense that sometimes you don't get. I learned that actually to be better in life, you just can't rely on education. You have to rely on all the people who support you around you. So I surrounded myself with very, very smart people. And I learned a lot from them. And I also learned the power of social network. Because I know that as we go up in life, we get, believe it or not, more lonely. And when you're lonely, you actually need a small emotional ecosystem. And I still have my very, very best friends in my life from Bits Pilani. And if you are listening to this, I all want, want to tell you that I'm hugely grateful for the emotional support that you have given me 
all these years to make me who I am today also, fairly emotionally balanced. I want to tell you a story about my father nurturing and another professor of bits which made a massive difference to my life. Unfortunately, I do not remember his name and I did not ever meet him. But what happened was my mother was working in the school and as a result of which she should get every year leave travel allowance to go anywhere in the country in a first class ticket for her and her father and her husband. So she was going and you normally used to take the longest distance away so that you could t use your first class ticket. So she went to Chennai with her first class ticket from Bareilly. Obviously it was you know, the best bang for the buck if you might. But during that train ride, and I do not know why, it was summertime, so obviously there was, this college was also being closed. She met a professor, my father and her met a professor in Bitspilani in the same first class compartment. So my professor like, you are from Bitspilani? He said, yes, we are from Bitspilani. He said, my son goes to Bitspilani, we are so proud of him. He said, aha, uh -huh, wonderful, what is he doing? He said, he's about to, you know, become a chemical engineer. In those days, you could only become a chemical engineer. First two years, you had to basically get good enough marks, and then you would get engineering. You might remember, some of you. You'd never got engineering for granted. So I did well enough to become an engineer, but you'll hear the rest of the story right now. So he said, okay, what was his CGPA? My father knew my CGPA well. He said, it's 6.13, his first division. He said, no, sorry to tell you, he's not first division. First division starts with seven. <laughs> Now, two years or more than two years had already passed, and now to make up from six to seven was almost a mathematically impossible task. So he wrote to me, there was no phones, he wrote to me on the phone, uh, on by email. I wish I really had the letter too. It was the most important letter of my life. And he wrote to me saying, uh, Rakesh, dear Rakesh, as luck would have it, we met this professor on the train. All the while I was thinking you were doing so well and you were getting first class, but he told me that first class starts from seven and you are at 6.13 because my grades used to go to my parents actually. So you're getting seven, uh, you know, 6.13. And, and then he also explained to me that during the next few years he would have to really max out almost to get seven. So it's nearly impossible. I want you to know that I love you very much. And I want you to know that I want you to look after yourself and not get too anxiety. I know you are going to do very well anyway. Just look after yourself. That's all he wrote. And sometimes I feel that people, us as parents too, we put too much pressure on our children. And this is what sometimes leads to emotional and mental health issues. I cannot thank my father enough for writing that letter to me and telling me that actually it does not matter. The pressure does not matter. The story does not get over here. The story only starts. Because what I then did was I raised the bar for myself. And I said, well, no matter what happens, I'm going to get up first. And I will make my father proud. And that's what I did. I worked really hard for the next two years and got a first division. So I think I learned the culture of working hard and to really look up, you know, to, to, to to make people proud, I think from here too. And I think that, that, I think that story probably creates the journey of my life. I mean, I think that itself, I'm probably the first time I'm talking about this story and it's probably quite relevant that I'm talking about it right here in, in, uh, in Bridgeville. Anyway, so this is where, uh, you know, uh, you know my, my story really started. And I, like I said, you know, there is something quite special about this place. I really, really do think so. And it's not a surprise that our family has decided to put, you know, our, our emotion, our, our, our work here, right here in this campus. And I don't have to tell you how much I believe in innovation because innovation is the lifeblood. It is the lifeblood of human progress. We just have to look in our pockets, in our hands, and what innovation has done to our life. And I think if this center can play a small part in making lives better, richer, superior, that would be the greatest contribution that we would have actually made. So really, uh, I would say there's an another thing which makes, by the way, uh, Professor Maheshwari, this place very special. 
And this place, I do not mean as just Pilani. I mean the bigger Junjunu district, which is, of course, it has created some of the greatest entrepreneurs this country has ever seen. Birlas, of course, we can never uh, forget. But also the Piramals, the Bajajes, the Mittals, they all come from here. So there is, is jagah ek pani mein kuch baat to hai. DNA to hai. So I think it is so fitting ki is we have just formalized, we have only put an infrastructure behind something that truly exists in this region. And I'm very confident that this center will create the future Birlas for India and abroad. So, um, as you know, I have formed a, a new uh, venture. It's called 12 Flags Group. And I will not go to the history of the 12 Flags Group, but all I would say is that it would be a great privilege because I did tell Professor Arya, who's unfortunately not here, but I miss you so much here, Professor Arya, if, if you're listening to me, I'm forever grateful to you too, uh, to help contribute through 12 Flags Group or through my own personal efforts, the innovation, not just through our mentorship, through our ecosystems, which of course we hope to bring, but also with more funding as and when required. I have I've said that ideas need some funding, but they also need mentorship and infrastructure. I hope 12 Flags Group can be part of that journey. So I don't want to lose, you know, I don't want to stop where I, uh, you know, with our commitment to today. I, I hope our commitment goes beyond today uh, further. And, and finally, I would like to say once before I have said this, but I will say against to this audience that, uh, I, you know, there is not something that I have said. It's something that Emerson once said. Emerson said that you can only seldom pay back. You can rarely ever pay back. You cannot pay back your parents for what they have done. I can't pay back. I just told you the story of my parents, both one who raised the bar for me, sending me to great schools. The other one basically told me you know, to, 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 that you are answerable to yourself too, and so on and so forth. Uh, you cannot pay, pay back your parents. I cannot pay back what this institution has done to me. But you can pay forward. And you can pay forward line by line, pesa by pesa. And our effort on the Rakesh Kapoor Innovation Center is just a very small step in paying forward. And therefore, I really encourage anyone and everyone who has anything to do with Bits Pilani to step forward and pay forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kapoor. Your accomplishments and contributions to the business world and the society will continue to inspire us all. Now, next we move to the felicitation ceremony. I request Professor Ram Gopal Rao and Professor Sudhir Kumar Barai to come forward for the felicitation ceremony. I request Professor Ram Gopal Rao to hand over a beautiful miniature model of this facility to Mr. Rakesh Kapoor as a token of our appreciation. I request Mrs. Kapoor to also join, please. Thank you. Now I request uh, Mr. Professor Sudhir Kumar Bhai to hand over the momentum to Mrs. and Mr. Srinivas Bhatt, the parents of Mr. Kiran Bhatt, who has been a key contributor for this facility. Mr. and Mrs. Srinivas Bhatt, please. I request uh, Professor Rao to facilitate Professor Shavik Bhattacharya. Hmm. 
Ich bin Attacke. I request uh, Professor Barai to please felicitate Professor L.K. Maheshwi. So please take your seats. Now I request Colonel S. Chakravarti, please come forward and facilitate Mr. Arun Khotan. Mr. Khotan, if you can call your parents also, I think it's a proud moment for him. Thank you, Colonel Chakravarti. Thank you. Such a large project is not possible by one person. There is toil, sweat, and efforts from a large group of people. Mr. Siddharth Banerjee, President ABG and Head of Pro Project Parivartan, along with his team, including Mr. Kalpesh Trivedi, have been personally been involved in making sure that the work is done with proper specification and as per uh, the expectations. They were supported uh, by Professor Devendu Bunia in charge of EMU and his team in completing small things that have big impact. I request Professor S.K. Verma to please felicitate Mr. Siddharth uh, Banerjee. Please, sir. Mr. Kalpesh, you can also join. Thank you. Now it's time to invite Mr. Kailash Gupta, Dr. Rakesh and Mr. Rohit from Jaipur chapter to felicitate Mr. Rakesh Kapoor and Professor V. Ram Gopal Rabao. As you all know that BGM 2023 was organized on a grand scale in Jaipur and uh, Mr. Kapoor and Professor Rao could not join over there. So these three people are here to felicitate them on, on the behalf of BGM team. Please come forward.
Yeah, 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 please. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, it's a matter of uh, pleasure as well as uh, pride today that uh, our team, Bitsa Jaipur, is uh, here on this uh, momentous occasion. Not only uh, it's pleasure because uh, the very innovation uh, uh, announcement that came uh, from Mr. Akesh Kapoor was during uh, BGM 23. And uh, the fact that, uh, you know, it is uh, resulting in this uh, center uh, is a matter of great pleasure to us. Not only this, it was uh, the BGM 23, wherein uh, for the first time we introduced a concept called Pilani Sharks, and which was, uh, you know, a concept uh, which curated about 120 startups. And uh, we had on the spot funding, so, uh, in BGM, which went to five startups. And uh, I'm glad and our team is glad that this center will be nurturing uh, startups with a program like Solve, where I think they will solve many problems. And Sparkle, wherein they will come out as uh, Sparkle to be unicorns. So my best wishes to entire team which is behind this project. And our pleasure to be here and uh, best wishes. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gupta. Now, I request Professor Sudhir Kumar Barai to please felicitate Mr. Pavan Jukhodia. He has been instrumental in the building of this entire, you know, this event. So, please, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now we come to end of this event, but I would like to propose a vote of thanks, especially to those who have been working hard for the successful execution of the, the project and the, the inaugural event. First and foremost, I think the financial support and big round of applause for all the alumni donors and corporate funding. I think we have already mentioned their names, but for the record, I'm again mentioning Mr. Srinivas Reddy and other batch the members of 1993 batch, Mr. Anura, Ms. Anuradha and Mr. Prashant Palakurti, Abhinav Asthana and Abhijit Khane, Chaitanya Kalipatnu, Seturaman, Mr. Seturaman, Mukesh Sharma, Mr. Kiran Bhatt, Mr. Prem Talreja, Mr. Hari Om, Vinati Organics, Vadwani Foundation, Aditya Birla Capital Foundations, Century Textiles and Industries Limited, batch of 1989 and 1994, and government support from DST, Methi, and DPIIT. Thank you so much. Let's hear it again for all these donors and corporates. Now, of course, uh, the vote of thanks for the event. I would like to extend a hearty thanks to Professor V. Ram Gopal Rao, Professor Sudhir Kumar Barai, Professor Shavik Bhattacharya, and Mr. K Arun Khetan for their constant guidance and support during the execution of the entire project. Special thanks to Professor Arya Kumar and Mr. Sachin Arya for working closely with the Parivartan team since the inception to completion of this project at all four fronts. My most appreciation for the members of alumni relations team and PI team, especially Aisha, Saurabh, Priyanka Raj, Priyanka Goel, Pramod, Harish, Ramesh, Santosh, Surendra, who have been working tirelessly for the past few days. Time to time, enormous support, time to time, enormous support has been provided by Colonel S. Chakravarti, Registrar in his office, Professor S. K. Verma in his office, Professor N. V. M. Rao and CPO office, Mr. Satin Sharma and Accounts office, uh, Ms. Professor Devain uh, Bhunia, Mr. Amit Goel and EMU, Mr. Kel, uh, Mr. Kalpesh and the entire team from Parivartan office, Instrumentation Department, Reprography, VFAS, Transportation, IPC, Public Relations Office, Security, PMIU, and many more, at least, you know, I cannot count all of them. For the last 25 months, they have been, you know, helping us. I'm also thankful to the local, uh, you know, authorities who have been supporting us in, you know, in building up this entire entity. Let's hear it to all of them, guys. And I'm so sorry if I missed any names. Uh, please apologize. Please accept my apology. 
Uh, the Rakesh Kapoor Innovation Center represents a vibrant hub where ideas will flourish collaborate, and collaborations will thrive and innovations will come to life. It's a testament of what we can be achieved when visionary individuals like our alumni and institution come together with a shared purpose. The Rakesh Kapoor Innovation Center is an integral facility having a 150-seater co-working space with conference and meeting rooms, multiple specialized labs in the areas of IoT, artificial intelligence, machine learning, fintech labs, AR, VR, AI, ML, API, C, CG, CV, UI, UX, etc., and with multiple administrative offices for professionals and faculty members involved in incubation activities. Um, we truly hope that this facility will prove to be a game changer in the continuing success story of Bits Pelani, and we will see many more unicorns in the near future whose journey would be starting from this very place. Thank you all for joining. I must thank the local administrative people who are joining over here, Director Siri, Director B BIT, Chairman Nagar Palika, and all other dignitaries who are joining us on this event. Thank you so much. Uh, a very thanks to everybody, and I invite all of you for a cup of tea outside this premises. Thank you so much. If you want to see the facility, Mr. Saurav, our team will be there to show you the entire facility G plus 2. You can have a look and you can